Welcome back. In this short lesson we are going to look at the conventional way of tracking the neutrons in the space of the system. In one of the previous lessons we have already derived the formula that we can use to sample the distance to the next collision. The formula is dependent on the random number between 0 and 1 and the total macroscopic cross-section of the material in which the uh, last collision took place. So this number, the total macroscopic cross-section, depends on the cell in which the collision uh, took place because different cells can contain different materials and also it depends on the energy of the neutron. We also learned that this formula could be applied directly only for homogeneous systems in case that the system contains a number of cells with different materials, we have interfaces in between the different cells. And when the neutron travels uh, across these interfaces, we cannot directly apply this formula for uh, sampling the distance to the next collision. We always need to check whether the distance to the interface L uh, is smaller or larger than the distance that we calculate according to this formula. If the distance to the interface is larger than S, then we can just accept the distance to the next collision. If this distance to the interface is smaller than the number that we obtained from this formula, then we have to stop the neutron at the at this surface, at the interface between two cells, and we have to generate a new distance to the collision based on the uh, new total macroscopic cross-section in the new region. So during the neutron transport simulation, the Monte Carlo code needs to calculate this distance to the surface. So, so far we have not talked about how the Monte Carlo code finds out the cell in which the particle is located. It needs to locate the cell in order to find out its material in order to obtain the total microscopic cross-section. And we also didn't speak yet about how to calculate the distance to the closest interface. So we are going to look at these two problems. So how can the Monte Carlo code decide in which cell the neutron is located? Uh, in principle, the point in which the neutron is located uh, lies on a specific side of each surface. So if you evaluate each function of each surface uh, at the point of the location of the neutron, you will obtain a list of positive and negative values. So this is actually a specific signature and that will uh, identify the point in the system and uh, the same signature we can assign to different cells so every cell in the system is located on a specific side of every single surface in the system so you simply need to compare the signature of your neutron position with the signatures of all these cells and once you find a match uh, in between of these signatures you can then claim that you have identified the cell in which the neutron is located. Now this procedure is fairly uh, expensive in terms of the CPU utilization so a considerable uh, part of the computing time is devoted for this procedure. Therefore the uh, Monte Carlo simulation of the neutron transport in more complex geometries takes generally more computing time than uh, 
dissimulation in, in uh, less complex geometries. So what now remains is uh, to calculate the distance to the nearest interface. So let's assume we have an interface like this and then we have a neutron located at some collision and it's flying towards the interface. So uh, let's assign a vector to the uh, place at which the neutron is located. So this is uh, x0, the vector x0. So it has the elements x0, y0, z0. And then we have the direction vector omega x, omega y, omega z. So that is our omega vector. So now we want to locate the place at which this line crosses this uh, interface. Now the points on these lines can be expressed as the x vector for which we can write that it equals x0 plus uh, some parameter L times the omega vector. So for any point on the line you can find L such that the vector on the line equals the vector x0 plus the product of L and the omega vector. So when we take this point at which the line is crossing the surface and when we express this point in terms of this uh, formula here, then L is the distance from the collision to the nearest uh, boundary. So the only thing we have to find now is this L parameter. So we have located the point except of this L parameter. So what we can do, we can just take this point and we can place it inside of this formula uh, for the surface. So we know that the surface is given by this equation and that is the f function on the left hand side. We know that if the uh, point is on the surface then the function gives uh, a zero value. So we can just take this uh, point, the x0 plus L times the omega vector and you can evaluate the function for it, right? So if it lies on the surface then the function must be zero. So this is basically our equation, it's written here. We need to solve this equation for the L parameter. Now when you look at it, the L parameter is the only unknown quantity in this equation because we know x0, y0, z0 that is the starting point and then we know omega x, omega y, omega z because that is the directional vector of our neutron. So we have to find the root for this uh, f function. So uh, we have to find the smallest positive root uh, for the L parameter here. So solving of this equation can be easy for uh, simple surfaces such as uh, planes but when you have more complex uh, shapes for these surfaces uh, the solution of this equation may be a little bit difficult. So in that case it may also take quite a considerable amount of computing time and especially when the whole geometry of the whole system consists of many surfaces. Basically you have to search the distance to the closest um, boundary many times for a single sampling of the uh, distance between two collisions. So uh, that's a big problem and uh, we are going to learn in one of the next lesson how we can actually overcome this difficulty of uh, solving of this uh, equation 
for uh, finding the distance to the boundary. And that is all for now. Have a nice day.